I feel like OnePlus came up in an era of the flagship killer doing the fundamentals right where a lot of companies weren't, but now it's 2023 and a lot of companies are doing the fundamentals right. So the question is, does doing the fundamentals right in the $600 price tag still matter? Is it still worth your money and your attention? It is 1.52 p.m. The phone is at 100% battery life. We're gonna start off the day by getting a cold brew because no episode is complete without a cold brew. Also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. More on them later. In the theme of nailing the fundamentals, the design this year is really good. It feels comfortable in the hand. One thing I will say is that it's definitely heavier than a lot of other smartphones in terms of feeling. And I don't know if that's like a weight distribution thing or if that's a um, just camera hardware, like what they put in the phone thing. If you look at the phone on the back, there's a giant thing that says Hasselblad, which is this partnership that OnePlus supposedly has with Hasselblad to make the cameras significantly better. Later in the video, um, and kind of throughout the video, like right now this is a camera test on the phone, we're gonna keep seeing if that partnership actually paid off. One of the main areas that people have been upset with with OnePlus is inconsistency. They kind of go back and forth a lot on First, they have an alert slider, then they don't have an alert slider. They are saying they're gonna merge all their software and create Color OS. now it's still Oxygen OS. There's a lot of inconsistency. You don't really know what to expect with the brand. And I think that that makes it hard as a consumer to know like, if I get this phone, am I gonna be happy with it? And I think that some of the choices that they've made this year are like inconsistent with what their mantra has been over the years. But I think that one of the things that is consistent with their mantra is performance. For the mid $600 price tag, this phone is killing it in terms of the specs. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, there's even an option to get like 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it feels fast consistently, which is a huge thing, and a lot of Android phones do not get that fundamental right, especially in this price tag. This is truly one of the nicest days we've experienced all year, like probably one of the nicest days thus far. The weather is so nice out, and I feel like everyone's just in a positive, optimistic mood because the weather is killing it. Ultra wide does not look amazing. Definitely I see a quality difference between the ultra wide and the One X. And this is in like very bright lighting environment. Zach, after we go to the garden, it says little cupcake bake shop, coffee dessert. I feel like that looks cute. The zoom quality, what is happening? Okay, zoom is definitely an area where I feel like this phone struggles. I'm just coming off of testing the S23 and the S23 Ultra and the difference is like vast. So the, it maxes out at 10X zoom for video and at that 10X, it does not look that great. Oh my God, I think I've been here before. Wait, this looks so familiar. I am 80% positive that I was here in the Pixel 6a day in life review. Someone in the comments that has better sense of direction, let me know. But this looks so familiar. I feel like I've definitely been here and it's so cute. It is so bright that we're really getting to test the dynamic range of the phone. And it has something called high dynamic range AI. I feel like AI is like this buzzword now. That is actually really cool. I want to make a video kind of breaking down the state of AI in 2023. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in that, want to see it. But it is interesting how AI can also be used very subtly. Like I think we're seeing the big use cases of like ChatGPT, which I just made a video on. But then we also have the more subtle uses of like AI just working in the background to make computational photography better. And that's kind of what's happening on this phone. That's loud. Maybe we'll go on this side of the park. It is 225 and the battery life is at 97%. One of my favorite things about New York City is that all of this like chaos, right? Like even all that noise is so like energizing to be around. Like everyone that is here is working towards a goal and trying to like better themselves, get like the best version of themselves, live their best life. And it's so infectious and inspiring to be around. Is it this way? Yeah. I'm really excited. It is 3.37, the phone is at 88%. I am just having the best day. This coffee's great, the tech is so exciting, and it feels to me like OnePlus is one of my favorite companies, and it was kind of sad last year when it felt like they fell off a little bit, because I think a lot of people buy the phones for the excellent value to price ratio, and last year it felt like that ratio is out of whack. And when I think about what makes that ratio good, it's hitting all five fundamentals of a phone, build, display, performance, battery, camera. And if any of those isn't getting hit enough in comparison to the price, that's when the phone kind of falls off. So the question that we're exploring in this video is if they've made the magic formula, like if they've hit it again. I'm so happy that the coffee is good. This has changed the game. The coffee game is now, we're back on track. I feel like the subplot of these day in life videos is me trying to learn directions. <laughs> It's 422, the phone is at 85% battery. The direct comparison that I'm making in my brain right now is, is this phone better than the Pixel 7? 
or should you buy this phone? For like a Pixel user, I think that one of their fundamentals that they really value is camera quality. So it would be placed higher. For OnePlus, I think one of the fundamentals that people really value is specs and performance. And then I think a secondary thing that people really valued in the past that OnePlus is unique at was having great software. Now they've combined the coding language with their partner company, and that has led to, that has led to a lot of like, what even is that? Like, that wasn't even a normal car sound. That has led to a lot of people not being super happy with OnePlus. They've kind of sidestepped it and backtracked a little bit, and so now it's still Oxygen OS. Oxygen OS used to be really popular in an era where a lot of phones had like super heavy skins, and the only way to get like amazing stock Android was really Google or OnePlus in the US. Now Samsung has toned down their skins a little bit. Google is still here. And so I think that that as a selling point has become a little bit less enticing. Okay, so preferences what you prioritize being the indication of if this is a good value phone. I think that my thoughts on it, and we'll do a final battery check in soon, is that if you really prioritize performance and like the enthusiast culture, OnePlus is still kind of the brand that shows up in that way. But if you prioritize consistency and camera quality, I feel like OnePlus has fallen short a little bit, and that's their normal formula. I feel like their camera is never excellent, but it's not a reason to not buy the phone because it's pretty good. It's just not as good as some of the competitors on the market. Back at the HQ now for the final battery test, and I also want to talk about Skillshare, who I feel so much gratitude towards for two reasons. The first reason is they're sponsoring this, makes the channel work, like they're the reason why I'm able to make this content and have this career, um, and you guys, obviously, you're the main reason. And second, I learned so much on Skillshare that I feel like they constantly are helping me better myself, and I feel like they're really trying to enable people to figure out skills that can help them build their dream life and their dream career. Like for example, for this YouTube channel, my goal right now is to hit 200,000 subscribers and we're getting very close. Um, and one of the things that I think will really help with that is understanding um, how to time manage as a creator. So I'm spending the right amount of time on different tasks and also how to kind of like personally brand myself. And Ali Abdal, who's one of my favorite friends and creators, literally has courses on both these topics on Skillshare. And I think for you, I know a lot of you guys are probably just getting started in your careers or thinking about potentially what your career is going to be in the future. And I think that most people do not invest time in actually bettering themselves. And so the bar is literally so low that if you and I spend any time just getting a little bit better, it's going to be a huge advantage and it's gonna help us reach our dreams and our goals. Um, and I think that Skillshare is this platform that enables education in so many different topics, whether it be like you care about that career success or learning new things like artistry or film or coding. There's so many things on Skillshare and like learning new things lights me up inside. So I've been using Skillshare actually for years. Like I think I created my first account with them many years ago. And right now they're offering one month free if you use my link. So if you have any ambition to learn something new, just like either for the pure enjoyment of it or because you're trying to build out your dream career and dream life right now, I would highly recommend Skillshare. I'm gonna leave them linked in the description below. Thank you to them for supporting me and this channel and our community. I appreciate you so much and I will see you next Friday for another video.